last chapter ended with our friends running after Koki's body while the pygmies were carrying it. In the middle of their pursuit, their school nurse suddenly appeared and hit Sakata on the head, asking them if they were bullying Koki. Could this be an obstacle in their pursuit of the creepy girl, or would she understand their situation? Let's find out. We continue the story in Chapter 174, titled Queen Sensei's Infirmary. Here, the nurse seriously stared at Gigi and the others, while Momo shouted in surprise that their Queen Sensei was here, and asked why she was inside the empty space. She also wondered if the nurse is an enemy, while Koki was complaining that they had hurt her without reason and out of the blue. Because of this, Gigi was confused and Momo became irritated. Gigi tried to talk to Queen Sensei and said wait, but she ignored him and replied that what was done was unforgivable and whoever did it should confess now. Queen Sensei seriously stated that she had zero tolerance for cowards who bully others. Gigi shouted that Koki was the one who attacked them first, to which Koki called him a liar and said she didn't know them. Because of this, Queen Sensei asked Gigi if he was saying that this girl attacked a big and strong guy like him. So Gigi said she didn't attack him, while Momo was trying to get the nurse's attention. Just as Gigi was about to explain, Queen Sensei said his words were nonsense, which Koki supported by calling him a liar and pervert, surprising Gigi who commented hang on. Queen Sensei pointed out that she judges people based on whether what they're saying makes sense or not, which worried Gigi. He started getting nervous and asked what he should do about this, and asked Momo to help him because he wasn't good at arguments, so Momo calmed him down. She said he was a good person, so he didn't need to fake it. Momo said that whatever he thought of, he should just be direct and communicate. While Vimola commented on the side that Gigi didn't hurt the creepy girl and that she was saying Momo was the one attacked by that girl. However, Queen Sensei asked if Vimola is wearing a costume as a joke, and if so, where was the person attacked by Koki? So Momo tried to get the nurse's attention and shouted that she was here. She irritably asked if she couldn't see her, and that if Ira was here, she would tell everything about how it really happened. Gigi then suddenly said seriously that a woman precious to him was hurt, making Momo turn to look at him. Gigi added that he wasn't lying, and he couldn't forgive whoever hurt her. He said that was the reason why he wanted to talk to Koki, and he asked her why she would do such a thing. They exchanged looks after he said this, while Koki immediately shouted that they were all lying, and that they had attacked her, saying they ganged up on her when she was alone. She told Queen Sensei to punish them right now, and make them admit their defeat so they would never do wrong again. Queen Sensei approached Koki and brushed her hair toward her ear while telling her to show her wounds. When Queen Sensei looked at her face, she saw the scratch she got from the table Momo threw, and commented that something was strange because she had said earlier that she didn't know Gigi. Koki put her hair back and tried to cover herself by explaining that she meant she wanted to forget that guy because he was crazy, to which Queen Sensei said she saw that, and asked if these people were bad people. Koki answered that they were, so she should deal with them now. Queen Sensei added that didn't she also say they ganged up on her when she was alone, which was strange because from what she could see now, the number of her companions far exceeded theirs. Momo was surprised by this and shouted that Queen Sensei could see the pygmies, while Koki was also surprised in a bad way. Queen Sensei explained that every day, she listens to students about their insecurities and anxieties, and among them are some who consult her about matters of spiritualism. She added that because she listens earnestly to any student's concerns, and having gone to exorcisms and bad places with those students seeking advice, at some point she became able to see spirits. Gigi was amazed by Queen Sensei because of this, while Momo realized that was the reason why she could also enter the empty space. Queen Sensei told Koki that she wouldn't call her a bad person just because she had countless pygmies with her, because regardless of who someone is, she always listens to where they're coming from. And she added that she wasn't making sense. She suggested that she should just try to be honest, and she wouldn't get angry at her. If there was anything troubling her, she said she was here to listen to everything she had to say. Koki lowered her head because of this, and while being watched by her pygmy companions, she began to cry. She stuttered at first, but tearfully admitted that she was the first one to attack Momo. 
Soon after, she began sobbing and apologized to them, while Queen Sensei just stared at her. Momo gave a thumbs up when she heard this and said it was okay and they shouldn't think about it and that they should just listen to why she attacked her. Queen Sensei then began to wind up, and to everyone's surprise, she slapped Koki hard while calling her a little shit, which shocked Momo and the others at what they saw. They tried to stop Queen Sensei and reminded her that she said she wouldn't get angry, but she just struggled and shouted for them to let her go. She said what she hated most of all were scoundrels who pretended to be weak. In the next scene, they entered Queen Sensei's office, and here Koki tied her hair and sat on a couch next to her pygmy companions. While facing Queen Sensei and the others, she explained that she had posted pictures of herself in underwear on a secret social media account, but a certain teacher found out about it and told her that if she didn't want others to know about it, she needed to stab Momo with the small knife she showed them. Momo and the others were shocked when they heard this. While Queen Sensei asked who the crazy teacher was who ordered this, so Koki said that in fact, she couldn't remember. She said she only knew that she met the person yesterday and today, but she couldn't remember who that teacher was. Ira asked how that was possible and suggested she might be covering for him, so she objected saying no and that she wanted to escape from that person right now. Momo commented that she had heard something similar recently, which caught Okarun's attention. She explained that this was during the time they were still dealing with the cursed trunk, where apparently, Someone had helped Zuma get Okarun's golden ball, but Zuma told her that he couldn't remember anything about who helped him, neither their appearance nor name. Because of this, Okarun commented that it's possible that the same person is involved in both the previous case and the current situation. While examining the blade, Ira asked if Koki was saying that the person ordered her to kill Momo. So Koki pointed out that it wasn't to kill her, but he said to steal Momo's power, which gave them an eerie feeling. 